Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Skate for Tarkov video. Today I'm talking about patch 13.0.5 and all this stuff going on in it. I've done a heap of testing, try and figure out what's working, what's not, if uh, if it's better or not. So give you my results um, and we'll cover you know all the information you really need to hear. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go through from top to bottom and then we'll talk about each of the issues and the things that we've discovered so far. Uh, the first iteration sound positioning settings on all locations has been completed. Uh, they configured the sound for Lighthouse and uh, Interchange and then fixed some main, main sound issue areas on Reserve and the Labs. Now, obviously, I haven't gone through every single spot on these maps. I actually haven't even touched Lighthouse, Labs and Reserve yet, but I have spoken to people on Labs and they're saying it's absolutely atrocious. And on top of that, um, most of the stuff that I was hearing in Interchange sound fine, but uh, we're going to get into some, some major issues later on. But pretty much, there's still the exact same issues from sound that was beforehand. I'm not going to do the full history of what's going on with sound, but BSU have gone down the path that they want to use the Oculus Audio System, and they want to make it this like immersive sound system. So the best way of explaining it is a, ga a game like Hunt Showdown, uh, the way you hear sound in that game is if you hear a noise, it's in a direct line from where that noise came from. So if they're on the other side of a wall, you'll hear exactly on the other side of that wall that there's a person there. If they came from the uh, from another place, you would obviously hear them running along behind all those walls. The way that they're using the Oculus Audio is you're gonna hear them coming from, say there was a wall there, but there was a door on the side or a hole on the side. You would hear the audio coming from the door. And that's where it gets really confusing. The big issue with this is also it gets very confusing when it's uh, above and below you because they'll, the noise should come from like the staircase and then muffled from underneath and it gets very confusing very quickly. I made a video very recently called uh, How Bad Is Tarkov Audio? This is it right here. You can go and watch it. I do three different tests on dorms, um, what, like an easy, medium and hard test. And most people got the easy, but once it went to medium and hard, uh, it gets very difficult. I've, I've got all the information there in that video. And the main issue with that, it's not gonna get any easier because the way it works is if they wanna have a competitive sound system, it's not intuitive to how we hear sound in video games. In real life, if you're standing in a, in, a, in, a, in a house and there's someone making noise in a room, you can tell from all the little tells, like from the reverberations of the sound and everything around you and your ears, how they all work, that it's most likely that that person's in their room second down on the right or something like that just because of your knowledge of the area as well whereas in escape from tarkov it doesn't work like that and in video games it doesn't work like that it gets very confusing so um in the past the main issue people had was to do with the occlusion zones where there was like dead spots and sound and people were like where's the audio they're getting mad about it ultimately it came back to people blaming steam audio but they didn't actually actually understand what the issue was but they just blamed steam audio and it was actually the occlusion zones that was the issue. PSG pulled out Steam Audio, brought in Oculus Sound, and now we're where we are right now. So that was a lot more long-winded than I wanted to go with it, but I needed to explain that uh, just because there's no point me going through all these issues and changes and, and fully testing it because it's not going to get fixed until they either t totally remove the, Steam, the Oculus Audio system or I don't think they can actually fix it. That's my, my thoughts. But... Let's continue. Rework the sound engine for voice lines. The sound is now more realistic. Uh, adjust, adjusted curves for the volumes. Drop muffling transparency of the sound at a distance. Voice lines are balanced in accordance with the loudness and of the phrase. Uh, improved active headset system. Lowered the volume of all headsets. Amplified high frequencies for more realistic sound. Added functionality that gives some headsets an advantage by increasing the hearing radius of footsteps and voices. So I've actually used these headsets a lot in real life, pretty much the contacts that are in Tarko, and it kind of muffles out certain sound frequencies, I think it is, like the basses, kind of like gunshots will actually get muffled out a bit, um, whereas voices stand out a lot. And that, that's why it's called active hearing. It's so then you could not get deafened by a gunshot right next to your ear when you're shooting a gun, but you could hear your mate talking down, you know, just, just down from you. When you're actually at a range, you could actually hear someone quite easily from like 30, 40, 50 meters away having a full conversation because of how they work. So that's what they're trying to replicate here with these with the active hearing. We did a lot of testing uh, with this new headset system. Uh, I'll have all the examples come up and, and the videos showing you in the background of what's been going on. I tested different headsets to uh, see which ones work the best and the least. If you want the, the, the TLDR, uh, headset tiers based off range. So this is just based off the range of how far they are. There's obviously going to be in preference on 
um, how you like to hear the sound. But Comtac 4s and XLs, they were the best. Ultimately, if someone was walking away from you, now this is where it's really fucky, all right? I'm using the word fucky because there's no other way to explain it. If someone's walking away from you, you would hear them more and longer than if someone was walking towards you. So when they're walking away from you, it's like there's a noise gate. But as they're walking away, they've activated your audio and you're going to hear them keep walking further and further away until with the XLs and contact fours, about 80 meters away. However, if they're walking towards you with the contact fours, they didn't actually come into audio range until they got to about the 70 meter spot. So this is where it gets really confusing, right? Because um, we also chucked in, just to test it out, someone going overweight, walking away, and they could be heard walking to 150 meters. Uh, we tested a couple of times, 150 was the furthest way, for the rest of this distance, uh, that we could hear someone walking away. Uh, but then when they were running away, it was 90 meters. And this is where it could, like, I just don't understand it. Like this is where the audio issues are in the game. Not, this is more towards like Oculus Audio and, and, and how the audio system works, not the actual contacts itself. So don't blame the contacts for this, blame the actual audio issues in the game. Now I'll go through a very basic way of understanding it, but if you're not wearing any contacts at all, um, you're gonna hear someone from about 40 to 60 meters away at best. Uh, and that's walking away. If they're walking towards you anywhere up to about 40 meters away, you'll start hearing them. Uh, and then you've got pretty much how I've tiered it is the Comtac 2s and the GSS-Hs are the worst. Middle tier is your M32 Swords and Razors. If you uh, want to spend that extra little bit, Tactical and Fast MT headsets are actually pretty decent. Um, it's actually very close to the best headsets. And then the Comtac 4s and the XLs. Now, I, Comtac 4s at the moment are like 230,000 rubles. XLs are over 100. So obviously, I would just say pick something in the middle. And then if you can afford it and you're splurging, go for the better ones. Um, but when we're talking distance, it's probably about a 20 meter distance gained from having contacts on uh, over not wearing contacts. So it's probably best off always wearing them, even if they're GSSHs, because it's going to make like a fair decent distance gain in hearing someone either running towards you or running away from you. Now, uh, they adjusted the audio tracks that had sound artifacts, background voices and noises. I haven't heard any differences yet, but I really just wish they would add some different noises to night time so you didn't just hear crickets. Fix the sound effect of concussion, which appeared when using Golden Star Bomb or when stunned by the grenade. The effect is now smoother. The sound of tinnitus is played in stereo mode without the positioning effect when you're turning your head. All right, my testing from this, if you have contacts on or any sort of uh, active hearing, if you pop a golden star, there is no audio like tinnitus noise at all. If you're not wearing them, you get punched in the eardrum by the high ringing pitch of the like tinnitus. And if you throw a flashbang grenade, either with or without headsets on, active hearing on, and you walked straight up to where they are, uh, the grenade is and look at it, the audio doesn't make any uh, tinnitus noise at all. Balance sound volume for M18 grenades to match other grenade types. I haven't tested that, but obviously it meant to sound like the other grenades. Fix an, fix an issue with short-term muting of the sound uh, when the sound source transitions between rooms. Fix an issue with that occurred when opening a door and the sound source behind it sounded muffled. Fix an issue when leaning against the wall, which would allow you to hear everything in the room behind the wall. I didn't test those three things because I didn't have previous examples of from before that. Fix visual bugs when using flashlights. So I uh, tested all the flashlights on Interchange and went through all the little scenarios that we could think of. I went into Interchange and I like got people to stand behind walls and try and shoot through, uh, use the flashlights through the walls. And uh, there wasn't any issues with the flashlights. They actually worked really well. So the actual flashlights themselves aiming through either a container, a wall, a pillar, it, it seems really realistic and works really well. When it came to the furniture store, I jumped up on top of the furniture store and had people walking around through the furniture store and just showing off the flashlights, uh, how they would interact with other buildings or other things within the actual room. And it works really well. Some of the negatives um, that I actually really did notice, the uh, flashlight bug that everyone knows about where a flashlight is off for you, is on for someone else, that is still in the game. That's still an issue. Another one is when you actually look at someone with a flashlight, sometimes it gives like a little bit of a strobing effect, which I'm not sure if that's intended or not, but if like, it's only in very specific spots that it will give a strobing effect. Some really major positives that came out of it. If you're aiming a flashlight, say at a door and there's like the gaps in the side of the door, if you know, on interchange there's like that, like manhole looking at, like window in the door, the actual flashlights going through look really amazing. 
and uh, they've done a really good job of how it, it's represented and it looks really natural. And one of the other cool things is in the past, it didn't matter really matter what angle you were to a person, you were kind of blinded by their flashlight. Now, uh, it doesn't really give that blinding effect uh, unless you're like directly like being aimed at by that person. And on top of that, the further away you are from someone, the less the effect the flashlight has. So now if someone's aiming it in your direction from like 100 meters away with a flashlight, you can see them quite easily. You, you can just see that they've got a flashlight on and that, you know, they're standing there walking around with their gun out. Whereas in the past, that would kind of be this ball of light. Now that ball of light is gone. And so you can actually actively aim at someone from a range and it, and it works really well. So that's a, that's a bit of a win. Now, number three being the bots can no longer uh, instantly rotate while prone. That's no, I didn't test that one out at all. Disabled experience gain for killing and looting players in the same group. Dog tags of such players will be sold to traders for one ruble and will not be considered as found in rate. There is bugs with this one at the moment. So uh, the intention behind this, and it was my suggestion to BSG, was to make it that if you kill a teammate, that you didn't get any XP or uh, rubles for their dog tag. So no XP for killing your teammate and the rubles for the dog tag will be worth nothing. But obviously they've implemented this, but BSG has obviously made a bug with it because it's not working properly. But the idea behind this is then they're going to increase the amount of XP and rubles that you get for killing other people. So you kill someone else, you'll get more XP for it. And then when you loot their dog tag, it'll be worth a lot more money. And this means that you get more of a reward for killing people in PvP. So that's the whole premise of why this changes in the game hopefully they can fix the bugs because what's happening right now is someone said that they killed or they looted someone that died to Gila, and the dog tag was worth one ruble so changes and fixes obviously need to be made last but not least reduce the frequency of bot voice lines and shouting during combat so i haven't done much pvp or pve yet but i'm sure we'll get around to seeing that all right, so that's pretty much my initial thoughts, reactions, and uh, information from all, all my testing so far with the uh, patch. There are some really good things um, being added to the patch. The flashlights work a lot better. However, obviously, they've still got that bug that they've got to fix. Um, the Golden Star obviously has half of it being fixed. I, I hated that tinnitus noise, but they need to fix that one still um, when it's when you're not wearing contacts. And there's heaps of audio issues still when it comes to positioning and all that kind of stuff. I honestly hand on my heart i love this game so much but i honestly need to see a massive improvement for the audio system otherwise i'm just not going to play maps that have buildings or if i do play a map that has a building i'm just not going to go near it because there are so many issues when it comes to sound positioning when there's multiple floors and multiple rooms so play maps like woods shoreline don't go on a resort you know any of the maps are outside and you'll have a lot of fun playing tarkov uh, good luck if you go into dorms or labs all right that's it for this video like and comment for the youtube algorithm i am streaming on twitch right now as i am filming this so that's why there's people typing next to me in in the chat um, but i am heading to europe in a few days time and going to be traveling around the western and northern parts of europe climbing mountains so if you want to check out that stuff check out my before death content the next video will be going live this week and on top of that i do a weekly podcast with the same guys and it's going to be a lot of fun and i'll be live streaming the climbs of all the mountains these are the countries netherlands Belgium, Luxembourg, England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and France. See you at TwitchCon Paris. Bye-bye.